It's another Wednesday and we are here back in the book of Acts, the Acts of the Apostle. And we've been going through Acts from the first chapter and we're now in the 26th chapter. Uh, this week we're going to go 19 and we're going to try to go all the way to 32 and finish it up. Uh, chapter 26 this week. The Acts of the Apostle. The Acts of the Apostle. Praxis in the Greek. The exemplary actions of extraordinary men or extraordinary acts of exemplary men uh, and women. The Book of Acts. Now we are in the 26th chapter and we left you uh, where in verse 18 where it says and open their eyes in order to turn from darkness to light, from darkness to light, and from the power of Satan to God. And so therefore, uh, King Agrippa, uh, Paul tells him, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision. And that's where we're going to kind of start at here. This vision that Saul, when his name was Saul, Shual in the Hebrew on the road to Damascus. And that's, uh, Paul talks about his testimony quite a bit. Uh, verse 20, but there declared first to those in Damascus and in Jerusalem and throughout all the region of Judea and then to the Gentiles that they should repent, turn to God. And that's our subject for today. Repent and turn to God. Repent and turn to God. Because that's really all what we want people to do is repent and turn to God. To Shabbat, that you automatically turn all the way around to God in your life. A lot of people say, well, we want people to join church. And order, we automatically want to put legalism on. It's not about legalism. It's about you re repenting and turning your life to God, turning your life to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and being filled with the Holy Ghost and listening and reading and gleaning from the word of the true and the living God. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. It's not a hard thing to do. A lot of people want to go to Christ, but they want to go on their own, what they think they ought to do on their own way. It's not like that. You've got to turn to God and live for the Lord and be for the Lord in every aspect of your life. And some people are honest. They I don't want to turn. I, I don't want to turn. I want to be what I was. I want to do what I'm doing. But my brothers and my there's a blessing when you turn to the Lord and live for the Lord and live in the, the light of who God Almighty is. Again, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. So that was verse 20, hallelujah. Repent and turn to God. And here it is in the second part of that 20th verse. And do works befitting repentance or do works appropriate to repentance. Again, some people want to have it their way. You can't have it your way. You've got, it's got to be God's way. I've lived long enough in my life to learn that it's about God. It's not about you. It's about the Lord's way. It's not about you. It's about Antonine's way. It's not about you following and loving and living in the light of who God Almighty is. Hallelujah. Verse 21. For these reasons, the Jews seized me in the temple and tried to kill me. Verse 22. Therefore, having obtained help from God to this day, I stand witnessing both to small and great, saying no other things than those which the prophets and Moses would come, would said would come. Paul himself, what he's doing is placing himself in the line uh, along with Moses and the other Old Testament writers. Paul stresses that Christianity is not heretical, but the fulfillment of the scripture. And that's what Paul's trying to do. I was listening to J. Vernon McGee earlier today. A lot of people don't want to listen to what's said in the Old Testament anymore. Some, there's one 
big time preacher who says that the New Testament really ought to start in the book of Romans. And I don't know where he's getting that from. He's just throwing out the book of Acts and the synoptic gospels. But here it is all of, I say this just about every week now, all of scripture. Not some of scripture, not what we think in our pea-sized minds, but all of scripture, all of it. We benefit from all of scripture. We live by all of scripture. We should do what all of scripture says we ought to do. So, so here, Paul is, is, is getting ready to set a grip up. Watch what I'm saying to you. Verse 23, that the Christ will suffer, that he would be the first to rise from the dead. Now, some versions of the Bible says that Christ would suffer and be, be resurrected from the dead. Resurrected. Anastasius. Anastasius resurrected from the dead. Now, a lot of people say, why are you emphasizing this point in, in, in this, these days in which we live in? Because you have a lot of people who are really not believing the, the uh, resurrection of Jesus Christ. Again, you can't take what you want to take out of the Bible or, or, or live by the part you want to live in. All of God's word, the death, burial, and resurrection, and the ascension, those are uh, monumental to what we ought to believe as Christians. We have to believe in the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Some people don't want to believe that. Yeah, I found in my career, I found people that didn't want to believe in the resurrection, but they believe in everything else. You have some that don't want to believe in the crucifixion, but they believe in the resurrection. You have some that don't believe in either the crucifixion or the resurrection, but they believe in the ascension. It's in the Bible. Look at, the. go back and read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and you go back and read the book, the entire book we've been preaching for, for almost two years, the book of Acts, the Acts of the Apostle, Praxis. Go back and read it again. The resurrection is paramount to our belief in who Jesus Christ is. In fact, I'll go on record to say, if you don't believe in the resurrection, you may not be a Christian in death burial, resurrection, and the ascension. Oh, and he's sitting on the right-hand side of the Father now. Oh, but he's coming back again. And he's coming back after his church. Oh, I'm getting off the subject. But I'm just trying to get you to see because so many people today don't see the seriousness and the belief in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And you have a lot of other groups out there that teach a whole lot of things, but they don't teach the death, the burial, the, re the burial the resurrection, the ascension of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To proclaim the light to the Jewish people and to, still in the verse 23, and would proclaim the light to the Jewish people and the Gentiles. Verse 24. Now as he thus has made his defense, Festus, said with a loud voice, Paul, you are beside yourself. Much learning has driven you mad. Now we're back with uh, Pontius Festus again, who's brought him to King Agrippa. And uh, he's saying, Paul, you're beside yourself. Much learning is driving you mad. He makes a very interesting statement. A lot of times when people don't want to agree with certain things from an educational from an archaeological, from an intellectual standpoint, they will attack where people are coming from with them. I've been to lectures and debates where the people will automatically attack. It's just like atheists. What do atheists do? Real truth, die the rule atheists that, that hate Christianity, they attack it. They attack it. They don't have anything to base it against. They don't have no evidence, but they will still attack it. They'll die, another one will come up and attack. And isn't it interesting, though, that the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ is still paramount in with us today? And we know a lot of great atheists have gone over to sleep. Some have died. Some have fallen asleep in their own uh, so-called intellectual stupor. But the Word of God is still with us. The Word of God is still leading us. The Word of God is still shining to us. The Logos, the Word of God is still with us 
today. Here he is telling Paul, much learning has driven you mad. Verse 25. But he said, I'm not mad, most noble Festus, but speak the words of truth and reason. Brothers and sisters, get into the word of God. Learn the word of God so that you will be able to decipher truth and reason. You'll be able to speak truth and and reason. You'll be able to show people in God's word truth and reason. You'll be able to, when everybody else is, is losing their minds all around you, you'll be able to stand with dignity and with the Holy Spirit and still give people truth and reason. And that's one reason why it's important to have a serious relationship with the Holy Ghost. Let the Holy Ghost tell you what to say. Let the Holy Ghost tell you what to do. And you'll be able to take the authority over every situation in your life. When you have the Holy Ghost, brothers and sisters, Verse 26, for the king before whom I also speak freely knows these things, for I am convinced that none of these things escapes his attention since this thing was not done in a corner. Verse 27, King Agrippa. Now, King Agrippa is still there with his sister and companion, Bernice. Do you believe the prophets? I know that you do believe. Now, Paul is, is doing something called a calf comer. That's where you were able to take a situation, turn it around, look at both sides of the situation and give it back to the person. It's dogma. It's, 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 it's intellect that he's giving him spiritually. He's telling him, don't you believe? Don't you believe this? Verse 28, then Agrippa said to Paul, you must, you also, pers you almost persuade me to become a Christian. Now, we don't know if Agrippa was being a smart aleck when he said that. We don't know if he really meant that. We don't know if he was in a state of confusion. We are not really sure. But the Bible sees that it's important that it is recorded in God's word. So it says, you almost persuade me, Paul, through all of what you said to be a Christian. When you were talking about, I am Jesus back in verse 15, whom you're persecuting. When you said from turning from darkness to light, from the power of God. When you said later on in verse 20, repent, turn to God. When you talk about Christ and the resurrection, you, 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 pers you almost persuade me. Stop, this is a very, not only a telling point, not only jarring, but it's also intellectual. What he's saying here. And Paul said, I would to God that only, not only you, but also all who hear me today might become both almost and altogether such as I am, except for these chains. Paul is saying to them, he prays that and wishes that everybody that hears him today would change, brothers and sisters, that's simply, that's a very simple message. I wish today that everybody that I know would accept Jesus as the Lord and Savior of their life. No matter the race, the creed, or the color. No matter your gender. No matter your economical standpoint of where, whoever you are economically, no matter your vocation or your station in life, I wish that everybody would turn to Jesus. It is just simple. Just, just turn to Jesus. Just, just make it simple. Turn all the way to Jesus. A lot of people today would spend a whole lot of time trying to be more than what they are, trying to look into the wisdom of man and also live by the wisdom of man. But it's so simple. Just turn to Jesus. Hallelujah. Repent and turn to God. Verse 30. When he has said these things, the king stood up as well as the governor and Bernice and those who sat with him. Verse 31, and when they had gone aside, they talked amongst themselves, saying, this man does doing nothing, deserving of death. They knew 
that they were wrong. They knew that they had been wrong. Then Agrippa said to Festus, this man might have been set free had it not an appeal to Caesar. That meant that this saga was getting ready to go on and on and on. It's been lasting for three chapters now. But Paul, who's stalwart for Christ, Paul is focused 100% on his mission, and that is to tell the world who Jesus is. My brothers and my sisters, we live in times where people don't want to follow God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, but don't be deterred by anything anybody does. You keep following Jesus. You keep living for Jesus. You keep walking for Jesus. You keep breathing for Jesus. You keep on telling the world that there's only one name given under the heavens by which men shall be saved. And then that's the name of Jesus. Keep on living for Jesus. Keep on living for Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.